There we go. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Heaven's on Fire. Appreciate each and every one of you taking time out of your busy week to join us. Amen. And uh, I know we're counting down to the end of the year, getting ready for the new year. And uh, so now this will be our, our last uh, broadcast for 2023. And we will... Uh, uh, pick it up again. I think January 2nd is the first Tuesday there uh, right after New Year's. Amen. But we want to just say thank you for each and every one of you that have taken your time to join us. We count it an honor and a privilege for you to be with us. Amen. And as I do every uh, Tuesday night, I want to start off with our uh, mailing address and some announcements and everything. And we appreciate each of you that take the time to write to us. It is such an honor to hear from the house of uh, body of Christ in the house of the Lord. Uh, write to us at Gary and Paula Gatlin. That's 8533 McCrory Lane, M-C-C-R-O-R-Y Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221. Amen. We look forward to hearing from you. Amen. Uh, before we get started, I want to give you some real quick announcements. Uh, the holiday season's kind of changing everything around, but uh, put it this way, uh, on Sunday mornings, uh, now, there won't be any service, of course, this Sunday, Christmas Eve, but right after that, uh, on Sunday mornings at 1030 Central Time, the House of the Lord, hosted by Bob and Bobby Jean Taranjo, has their morning services, and they encourage everyone that can join us. When Paul and I are in town, we look forward to being in service with them, and we appreciate, amen, you joining us. Also, Sunday mornings at 1030 Eastern Time. Uh, Jubilees Ministry International with uh, host Mark and Jill Kaufman. Amen. They invite you to join them. It is a powerful time of worship, beautiful music and worship, and a great word of the Lord that comes uh, from Mark and the various ones that God would put him have him share. Amen. It is a great time in God. Uh, and before I forget, let me throw this in real quick, and I want to say something about the ministry here uh, that I'm talking about. Uh, don't forget the church. Uh, the first and third Sunday and the last Saturday of the month at the church, Mooresboro, North Carolina, Darren and Dana Best are the host pastors. Join them. You'll enjoy the music, the worship, and a great word. Now, I emphasize these ministries, but for this reason, the, the word of the Lord that has quality and resurrection life is rare in this day that we're living in. There's lots of people can give you word, can give you scripture, and just in general bring you a really good dead letter. But, but there are those that God has anointed in this hour that is joining the like spirits together in our hearts that has a resurrection flow of life that is feeding the body of Christ. And that's why I encourage, I, I share these, these various ministries and uh, uh, join them. And you will be blessed. Also, <clears throat> January 13 and 14 in Newcastle, Pennsylvania, at Jub Jubilee Ministries International, uh, Mark and Jill Kaufman are the host pastors. Paul and I will be there for that weekend. That's January 13 and 14. We're looking forward to a wonderful time in the Lord. I know this is ordained to the Lord. It's going to be a powerful time of visitation. Uh, also, January, and I hope I got this right. It's the last weekend of January. I think in 27, 28. I'm not sure. I don't have my thing in front of me here. So, whatever it is. <laughs> January 27, 28. I think that's what it is. Paul and I will be with Darren and Dana Best and the uh, wonderful people there at the church in Mooresboro, North Carolina, that Saturday and Sunday. So join us. Uh, you will be blessed. We're going, looking forward to a great time in the Lord. And there are other meetings coming up in, in the months to come. Uh, we're looking forward to 2024 being a powerful time of visitation as God begins to move his people into a new dimension in the spirit. Amen. Now, I, I think I've covered all the announcements. I, I want to get into this tonight. If you want to, you can turn with me to Deuteronomy, the second chapter, and we're going to share a little something out of that, the Lord willing. But as I do every Tuesday night, I want to give you uh, the, the words to this song that was written by precious friends of ours, uh, Faith Simons, who's crossed over uh, to the other side. She was from Cross Plains, Texas, and God gave her this powerful song. And uh, it, right now, I believe it, it is the song that God's put in my spirit uh, that it is being made uh, real right now. We're walking in, in the words of this song, I believe, the people of God. Heaven's on fire, destruction it seems, earthquakes and shakings and broken dreams. But this is the best place I have ever been. There's a new heaven, a new earth, and righteousness within. 
So let the fire burn away all the failure in me, and let the shaking establish perfect harmony, till only the pureness of Christ shall fill this land until the Word made flesh be manifested again. Wow, what a powerful, powerful Word. Amen. Uh, I want to uh, start off tonight, if I can, I want to get over here to Deuteronomy, the second chapter, and I want to start off uh, at verse number three, but as we get ready to read this, uh, I, I feel to, to say this, that the people of God, and, and, and those of you that have followed me for any length of time know that this is the way I feel, that God has given me a word to minister uh, to what I call the Melchizedek priestly order. I realize that, uh, you know, everybody has a ministry, that, and everybody that has a ministry ministers to those that God sends to them, and, and, and I make no apologies for anything like that, that I bless all of God's ministry, no matter where they are, what they're preaching or anything. Like Paul, the Apostle Paul said, uh, uh, thank God that the word is being preached. And we'll leave that right there. But I believe that, that we are in a place in the time uh, frame of God right now uh, where we, we have, we've heard the prophecies, we've seen it, uh, uh, sang about it, talked about it, preached about it, and done all the things we've done. And, and to the point that we've almost become numb to the fact that God's about to do something. And, and let me just say this. That, that I believe that, that th this reality uh, is about to break forth on us in a way that we've never seen before. And I, I'm going to, uh, just before I get into Deuteronomy 2 here, I, I, I want to just real quickly just share a couple of little things that I, I brought out uh, Sunday uh, here at the house of the Lord, uh, Sunday morning, uh, how that, that we are in that time, we're in the time when, when God is getting down in, into our, the, our customs, He's getting down into our daily existence, and He's changing things all around us. And uh, real quickly, you know, the Scripture says that Jesus went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was His custom, and then He, he, he asked for the scroll of Isaiah, He read it, he closed the book, the Bible said, and then he sat down. And what anger, And then he said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your hearing. And it upset and angered the religious community of that day, not because uh, uh, of all that he said or prophesied or read out of the book of Isaiah. He had done this because this was his custom. It was not a big deal up until the time that he sat down because he sat in a chair that was reserved only for the Messiah. Then he proclaimed this day, is uh, the scripture being fulfilled in your hearing. Now, I want to go back real quick, having said that, to, to make you understand something. I believe that, that, that as we approach this new year, uh, and I know there's, there's people who want to jump on uh, uh, whatever God is doing at this point with what I call refrigerator magnet uh, uh, sayings, you know, and uh, this goes back every year. It means something, everything, and, and so forth and so on. And I'm not speaking to you from that standpoint. I'm talking to you from the standpoint of, of a moving in the Spirit of God as He begins to move up on the face of these waters. We're declaring something, and, 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 and whether or not it registers up here is immaterial. Those of you that I'm speaking to that God's ordained to hear this word in this hour, there is an, an, a, a, a witness of the Spirit in your innermost being that, that you cannot and will not deny. And we're getting ready to, to see a manifestation of some things like never before. Now, here's what the Lord spoke to me as we were getting ready to come in to, to do the service tonight. Uh, Deuteronomy, the second chapter. Uh, let me get this thing up here. There it is. Third, the third verse. You can pass this mountain long enough. Turn northward. And I want to stop right there just for a minute because there are a couple of words here I want to give you here uh, because here's what I feel like the Lord is saying. Number one, I was kind of surprised, I'll be honest with you, when I got into the ancient Hebrew <coughs> of this thing and it says you can pass this mountain long enough. Turn northward. That word compass there literally means you've been drunk and dizzy going in circles. You've not accomplished anything. But it's time for this thing to change, to walk into a manifestation. Now, when you read the rest of that chapter there, you'll find out that God says that you're walking in a place that has not, is not your destiny, is not your ordination. You're walking in a place right now, and he, and, and he begins to give the different nations and, and the tribes that you're walking, the children of Israel are walking through. And then here's what he tells them. He says, don't you take anything from them? 
uh, uh, you, here's what you need to do. You need to buy meat, buy water from them, but you're not to take anything. In other words, don't be compromised. Don't settle for anything. And where they are, where you are right now is not your destination. It is not your destiny. Where you are right now is not what God is wanting to do with you. He said it's time that you begin to go forward. And that, that word northward, uh, uh, to, uh, you can pass this mountain long enough, turn northward. That word northward actually comes from an ancient uh, Hebrew word which means the place where God lives. And what God is saying, it's time that we understand that, that there is about to be a full-blown manifestation of the sons of God. It will not be like we have had in the back of our minds for generations. We're not going to glow in the dark. We're not going to walk through walls. We're not going to do all that kind of thing. But it's going to be like Jesus did when he walked the shores of Galilee, if you please. How that he walked in their midst, yet he was not subject to those things that were about him. This is what the Lord began to quicken to me here in the book of Deuteronomy, second chapter, when he began to talk about you're going to go in their midst, you're going to go through the land. And, and that scripture began to come to my mind even as I was reading that, that chapter there. Uh, how that you're in the world, but you're not of the world. We're in it, but we cannot be compromised. We cannot settle for less. Over and over again, I hear what the Lord is saying to a people as he says, get ready. Uh, you waited for this day. Now the day is upon you. Amen. And we need to understand something. This has to do with us coming to our rightful understanding of who we are in God. Amen. And walking into the fullness of this day. Uh, we, we've tried to, to put on a religious robe. We've tried to put on religious idea. In other words, we've been buying meat from a lesser realm. We've been drinking water from a lesser order. We've been walking and compromising as we go. But God says, and if you look at this, God is speaking to them. And, he, and, and at one point, God says, look, you've been wandering all this time for 40 long years. It's time that you get out of the silly drunkenness and dizziness that you brought upon yourself and begin to walk into the straight and narrow where I've ordained you to walk and bring you into the fullness of where I'm bringing you. Here's what the Lord is saying. He's saying that we've compromised and we've settled for something that's less. But I hear the Lord saying out of the book of Psalms that King James says, the steps of a good man are ordered to the Lord. And, and here's what the Lord said. The ancient Hebrew, I love what this thing, this verse translates in the ancient Hebrew. It says the destiny of the warriors determined by God. And God says, I've got some warriors. I've got some Melchizedek's out there. And your destiny is not in the wilderness. Your destiny is not uh, uh, to be going in circles and proclaiming something and never walking in it. And now it's time that we understand that God is bringing a people into the fullness of this day. And he's bringing them into, and I just, I have to say this, this is, Something that keeps hitting my spirit over and over. How that, that uh, and I brought this out, how that, that the man laid by the pool of Bethesda and Jesus comes walking in there and he says, I'm no man. And we don't understand what, what was actually taking place is this. When that man was laid by the pool of Bethesda with no hope of anything ever changing for him, uh, in walks Jesus. But, and that's what, now that's what, uh, King James says, but I want to give you a little bit of interpretation here. Into him, his presence walked the dawning of a new day. Into his presence walked the resurrection himself. We need to understand God is looking for men and women to put on the whole nature of the Father and begin to walk in the fullness of this day, bringing the day. We are that day. We're bringing it forward. It's no longer us waiting on something out there. Uh, too many times, ladies and gentlemen, amen, we're, we're like Mary and Martha. We're waiting on the great day of visitation. We're waiting on this and waiting on that. And oh my God, I hear the Lord say it. I've been waiting on you. My mind all day long has been going to the story of the prodigal son and how that the Bible said, we all know that story, so I won't get into the details of it other than to say, the Bible says when he would was so hungry that what he said I'm going to do and this is what I'm seeing the sons of God uh, and you got to understand something amen that, the, that that boy that was out there with the pigs that boy that had run away and blew all his money and, and blew his inheritance and all this other stuff he was a son the whole time he never stopped being royalty he never stopped being son he was always a son no matter his situation and 
here he had to get to the point of being so hungry and I don't know about you ladies and gentlemen but I see some people in God that are starving and they're so hungry the Bible said he came to himself and he said I know what I'll do there are those in my father's house that eats better than this and we know that story and but I want to jump ahead because that story contrary to popular belief is not about the prodigal son it's about the father and his love and his destiny and his fullness and because the Bible said while the son who was repeating to himself this uh, the sinner's prayer if you please he was repeating to himself I know what I'll do I will say to my father this and this and this the whole time he's doing that the Bible says the father looked down the road and saw that tells me the father knew he was coming the father knew the fullness of time was at hand for this young man and he was looking for him and waiting for him he knew he would come to his identity and this is where God is bringing the sons of God in this hour we're coming to a realization of who we've always been from the foundation of the world we're beginning to arise with healing in our wings as we go forth like us creation is groaning it's not about us it's not about how, how spiritual we are or holy we are or, or knowledgeable it's none of those things it's about the royal bloodline that God determined in himself from the foundation of the world this is the day of the Lord that he's declared get ready there's about to be a fullness that's going to break forth like never before I'm excited about 2024 uh, and I, I don't even know what the numbers mean and don't care what they mean and we can break it down and it might be fine I don't care that's not the point the point I'm making is this there is royalty that has been hid for a time and a season my mind begins to go back Amen. To when God was getting ready to raise up Josiah. Uh, and the Bible, I think it was Joash or Josiah. I get the names confused. But, but the point I'm making is this. The Bible said when Athaliah, the queen mother, decided, amen, that she saw her kingdom coming down. She said, I'm going to preserve my kingdom. This is what I see taking place in the religious world. They're trying to preserve their ministries, preserve their kingdom, preserve their church. They're trying to preserve everything. The Bible said they went out and they destroyed the seed royal. They killed everything royal but God said oh hallelujah that the sister of Josiah the Bible and I love her name means the oath or the promise of God uh, God said it because I could swear by no other I swore by myself thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek the never ending order and I hear the Lord saying get ready amen I've hid the Bible said that the, 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 the sister she took him and she hid him in the nurse she hid him in the house of the Lord for six years I see where God has had a royal scene that has been hid for a time and a season oh we, we, we we look around and we want to join ourselves to this and we want to join ourselves to that and we want people to see our ministry and know us and we want to see this because we felt the life of God and we think you should be a part of this we want to share this wonderful thing that God has given us oh, but God says not yet it has not yet been for a time and a season but he said get ready I'm going to cause you amen because I'm going to write my word my law my nature my character I'm going to engrave it in your DNA so you cannot do anything but proclaim the greatness of God. Hear the word of the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to tell you that God says get ready. The greatest day that has ever hit mankind is about to dawn upon the face of this great old earth right here. It's not coming some glad morning. It is here upon you. I declare the, the greatness of this day. Why would you say this is the greatest day? Uh, Jesus himself said this is the greatest day. Oh, oh my God. All the way from Genesis. The Bible said God created man from Genesis all the way. And to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Amen. God caused the Son of the Most High God to be born. And because of that, it changed humanity forever. Then Jesus gets up and he says, Greater things than this shall you do, saith the Lord. Oh my God. Oh, i got to calm down. I, I tell you, uh, uh, I'm getting excited, y'all. It's their fault, y'all. <laughs> But I, I tell you what, uh, I, 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 don't mind. I hear the Lord. Here's what I hear from the Lord say. And somebody put it this way one time, and I really liked it. You better, you better look out. You better watch out for the second son. The second son is the one that has the future and the destiny of creation in it. What in the world are you talking about? Check your Bible. Oh, my God, I wish I had time to get into this thing. Uh, uh, the Bible says, amen, the first man, the first Adam. 
God created him. We all know what happened to Adam. And, and I'm not here to discuss it one way or the other. We just know that that was a, the Bible said, then fast forward. And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit here. And then I'm going to go back. So stay with me. But we go, we're going to fast forward here. Amen. And the Bible taught, uh, Paul was writing, and he talks about uh, uh, the second man, the last Adam. Who was that? That was Jesus Christ. Oh my. Now Jesus said, for this cause, I've come. Except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, he biteth alone, but if he dies, he's going to bring forth another. He's going to bring forth a many-membered son, if you please. And I'm paraphrasing some stuff, but I want you to hear this. Amen. He said, greater things, greater things. This, this next son that's not born according to Adam, but this next son that's born according to the, the DNA of Almighty God is going to change the world one more time. Oh, my. My mind begins to go back. Look, look, look at what happened to Jacob and Esau. Esau was the older. Where did the promise fall? The promise fell upon Jacob. Oh, hallelujah. That second son is what brought it. And we could go on and on and on. But I want to skip ahead here. Uh, because I'm going to tell you what I'm hearing the Lord say right now. He said, get ready. He said, you, you people. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. I don't care. We've been scattered to the four winds of the earth. And, and, and it's okay. And the geographical part of this thing is immaterial. But what God is saying in this hour, he's saying, I've got my sons that I've had hid. Like Josiah, you've been hid for a time and a season. Amen. For the six years. But there comes a time. When this thing is about to change, the Bible says, amen, that the priest took uh, and called all this, and I'm going to uh, give them a little different name, the sergeant at arms and the captains of the host. He began to bring them. He said, I want you to go and guard this gate and go guard that gate and do that. And he said, what we're about to do, we're about to have a crowning ceremony. We're about to have something take place where the, the true royalty is about to raise up. You cannot kill the royal seed of God. He said, I preserved you. I've hid you all this time. Oh, hallelujah. And what we're finding out, ladies and gentlemen, amen, is that, that, that they crowned Josiah when he was but seven years old. They crowned him and they began to raise him up and he began to reestablish the worship of God in the land of Israel. Amen. Up until that time, amen, they'd followed after the high places. And right now, God help us, we got churches all over the world worshiping in high places. They worship after the golden calf and they worship after lesser orders and they worship back to something where they compromised. But God said, I've had a ministry. I've had a priestly order that I've hid and I will not let them compromise. I will not let them. Yeah, we've been dizzy with all the stuff going on around about us. And you look at, you turn on your TV and see the news and all the mess going on in the world. There's a major shaking up. That which is first is natural than that which is spirit. And in the natural, there's shaking. Governments are shaking. Uh, empires and kingdoms are shaking. And in the midst of it all. I'm here to tell you God has a Melchizedek order. He's had hid for a time and a season and we're about to raise up with a sure word, the sword of the Lord in our mouth as we begin to go forth to conquer and to raise this thing up into a dimension that has never been done before. Amen. I'm here to tell you that where you are right now, like he told them, he said where you are right now, you've been wandering for 40 years. And I love that number 40. I was sharing with someone earlier today, the number 40. Uh, I know Jesus was in the wilderness 40 days and the children of Israel was 40 years and Noah was 40 and we can go 40, 40, 40 all through the scripture. The point I'm making is this. The, the number 40 means a new vision. The number 40 means, amen, a new uh, a dream. I, I'm doing something different with you. I'm, I'm reestablishing you in a new day. And I said when Jesus come out, it was 40 days he defeated the enemy and come out and begin his ministry. I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, the children of Israel wandered for 40 years and that 40 it had to weed out some things. It had to take out some people. Amen. And things that was uh, compromised and God says, get ready. I'm about to bring a people into the fullness of my nature. Oh, hallelujah. This thing when we open our mouth to speak, it's not to draw men to us. It's to push them up into the heavens. It's to cause them to see the glory of God. Some of you listen to me right now. I minister unto you your vision 
generation is about to change. It's not big enough. Amen. I'm not talking about something to draw things to your ego. I'm not talking about something to draw things, amen, to another move of God. We always want a move of God. I'm here to tell you, amen, God's not looking for another move. He's looking for some place to sit down uh, in His throne. He said, I set my throne uh, and I'm going to sit down. God said, I found my resting place. It's not another move out here for people to come to to have their fleshly needs met. I'm here to change their DNA. I'm here to change them so when you open your mouth, only God comes out. Amen. Nothing else. Amen. Not what I think. Not what I hope. Uh, not what I've studied. Oh my God. The only thing that's going to come out is God. Amen. Oh, how, that's, you know, that's, that's what made, that's what made uh, 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 the, the religious world, the Pharisees, so upset. That's what made them so angry. Amen. Because he would not come into their fold. He would not come under them. And he began to come and speak to the very thing uh, that, that they were using to control the crowds. I'm here to tell you, you better get ready. Some of you are about to have a visitation in your midnight hour. That's the word of the Lord going forth tonight as we close out this year and get ready to walk into a new year. A visitation of God is at hand. And I'm here to tell you, your dreams, your visions are about to change as God begins to birth something brand new in the earth. God says, we're going to minister. Amen. Body, soul, and spirit. I want us to hear that again. When Jesus ministered to that man by the pool of Bethesda, he said, wilt thou be made whole? Uh, to me, and I want you to stay with me. I hope you don't get mad at me for this, but I'm going to say it anyhow. Amen. We've had the great salvation campaigns back in the day. Amen. Uh, and I, we can name all the great uh, men and women of God back in the 1800s, early 1900s. And they had thousands and thousands coming to their meetings and getting saved. And, and, and some of them, too many, too many times, too often, they would walk their own way. And then we had some... Amen. As they come across into the 50s and 60s, late 40s, 50s and 60s, the great healing campaigns, people healed by the tens of thousands. No change of their heart, no change of their mind in God. Uh, they just wanted their body to stop hurting. They wanted to, to, to be healed of whatever disease was ravaging their body. Amen. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus did not walk into that, that pool of Bethesda man and say, you want to be healed? Would you like to be encouraged a little bit? Uh, would you want me to uh, give you some duty? Dads up and down your arm. Would you want me to make your hair stand up? Jesus didn't do that. He walked in there and said, Wilt thou be made whole? He said, I've got a word in this resurrection life that's flowing out of me. I got a word that will affect you in your body, soul, and spirit. It'll change you. Whether you like it, whether you don't, don't really matter. It's going to come against everything you've been taught in the religious world. It's going to come against everything your, your body is saying to you. It's going to come against everything. This word will heal deliver, change, and set you free. That's what creation's crying out for. We got a lot of people who want to be healed, but they don't want to be changed. We got a lot of people who want God to bless them with money, but, but, but they don't want to change anything in their life. And I'm here to tell you something. God says I'm raising up men and women, anointed, prophetic, a priestly order in this hour that's going to speak a word of life that's going over the walls that men and women have created in their hearts and minds and heal and deliver and set them free in spite of themselves in spite of what they think they want it's going to heal them and set them free God help us God help us that's what we need more than anything oh my that's what we need more than anything we need somebody to stand up in this house. We, we got too many people pushing their own ministry. We got too many people. Uh, that, that their, their ego is so involved. Amen. In everything. Uh, and and they, they, they model their ministries after whatever it was in yesterday. And I'm here to tell you, God's not in that yesterday mess. He has moved into a new dimension altogether. And those that He's put His hand upon, those that He's anointed for this hour, I'm here to tell you, amen, there's no ego involved in this thing. We're arising with the word of life in our mouth and we're speaking into lives and are being changed. I'm talking about people that come to meetings. Some of them that are watching online, their lives are going to be, be changed because of what God is speaking in these various uh, ministries that I've been sharing with you. Those that are in Newcastle, those that are in Mooresboro, North Carolina, those that are, that are right here in Dixon, Tennessee. God says, I've got a word of life flowing out. Amen. To men and women all over the world. And, and thank God it's going around because of the internet. It's going around the world and it's setting men free all over. Amen. People that have had no hope. People that don't. They, they, they trusted 
and, and their horses and chariots. They trusted in all of the things that they they that they've been taught to to, to uh, if you read, if you pray, if you this, if you that, and, and, and then and you do all of those things. You got your little spiritual checklist, and you check everything off, and nothing changes. God says, I've got men and women raising up with a word in their mouth that's going to speak into those lies and the chains will be broken. God's going to set them free and annul, disannul their covenant with death and change the order of their lives. This is the day of the Lord. I'm excited about 2024. I'm excited because God says that, that He said, I've had you hid. I've had some of you listen to me. I've had you hid for a time and a season. And, and, and I know I'm talking to some and we've got great anointed men and women listening to me right now around the world. But I'm here to tell you, you better hear the word of the Lord. This thing's fixed to get bigger, better, greater, and more powerful than you ever imagined. Uh, hallelujah. Because God says that this is my day. This is my day. I've perfected you. I've held on to you. I, I, and I've and, oh, got to say this. It just hit my spirit. Remember what Jesus said? The Bible said, Herod sent word to Jesus. Are you the Messiah? Are you the one? Jesus told him, he said, you go tell that old fox that today and tomorrow I'm going to heal and do cures, but on the third day I'll be perfected. There's a maturity coming. I'm not talking about someone makes no mistakes. I'm talking about a maturity that's coming to a priestly order that'll know the business of the Father. Oh, hallelujah. They'll know what thus saith the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. As he begins to take us to the secret place of the Most High and reveal himself like never before. Oh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Uh, this roller coaster is about to take off. I'm here to tell you, God's fixing to do something great and mighty uh, with the people of God that are so hungry. We've been hungry. We've been like that prodigal. And the Father, you know, we're waiting on God to do something, waiting on God. And God said, no, I'm the one standing looking down the road waiting on you. Uh, come to your senses. Come to who you are. You're my son. You never stop being my son. Just because you blew me in the hair does not mean you ain't my son. Oh, hallelujah. Just because you're sitting down there eating with the hogs don't mean you're not my son. I'm here to tell you something. God says, you've been my son the whole time. No matter what religion tells you. Your religion has told you you failed. You're a failure. You're this, you're that. But God says, you're my son the whole time. You are my son. And and, and the Bible said, he come to himself. And, and I love what the, what, what the, I believe the mirror translation puts it something like this. He came, when he said he came to himself, what it really uh, translates is, he came to the understanding of who he really was. Yeah. Wow. I like that. He come to the understanding of who he really was. And, and ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking to some right now. I'm talking to some of you right now. We're coming to the understanding and the true realization of who we are. Yes. We're not weary pilgrims trying to make it in. <laughs> uh, well, we're, we're, we're not just this or just that. Uh, but we have been chosen by God in him before the foundation of the world. And that blows our mind because we can't think about what happened yesterday, much less before the dawning of time. And God says, I've chosen you. You've not chosen me. I did the choosing. You are my son. You are my son. Oh, hallelujah. That royalty that is God is flowing through our veins. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I hope this will make some sense tonight. I got to quit. <laughs> oh, I... I Appreciate you joining me tonight. I, I pray this has made some sense. And uh, I, I thank you so much, everyone, of you for joining me tonight. You blessed me just by uh, sharing your time with me. Thank you so much. And don't forget these, these announcements that I made uh, uh, and uh, on Sundays, normally at 1030 Central Time, the House of the Lord, right here, Bob and Bobby Jean Taranjo, host pastor, join them. You will be blessed as God begins to uh, do wonderful, mighty things. Also, Jubilee Ministries International in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Amen. Mark and Joe Kaufman uh, at 1030 Eastern Time. Join them. I tell you, they got powerful worship, beautiful music, and a tremendous word of life that flows out of that place. Uh, and Darren and Dana Best, The Church, Mooresboro, North Carolina, the first and third Sunday and the last Saturday. Join them. You will be blessed with the word, the worship, and the music. God's moving mightily. Also, January 12, uh, excuse me, 13 and 14, uh, Paul and I will be at Jubilees Ministry International in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Amen. With, with Pastors Mark and Joe Kaufman. We are so excited to go up there and be a part of that. We're going to have a great time in God. I understand there's 
a, a wonderful group coming uh, from up uh, around Detroit, Michigan. They're going to be driving all the way and joining us there. And, and various ones are coming in for the meeting. That and I'm just, We're just so excited. We're looking forward to yeah. joining Mark and Joe Kaufman right there at Jubilee's Ministry International. We hope you can join us. If not, join us online. That's January uh, 13 and 14. I hope I got that right. Amen. Also, January, the last weekend of January, 27, 28, I believe it is, Saturday and Sunday, Paul and I will be in Mooresboro, North Carolina with Darren and Dana Best at The Church. If you can, join us there. We're going to have a great time in God. Those of you in that general area down there, if you can, make plans to be with us. It's going to be a wonderful time. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate all of you that have made comments online or, or you written to us, text or call, phone call or message, however you choose to write to us. We love hearing from the body of Christ. You can write to us at Gary and Paula Gatlin. Uh, and that's at uh, 8533 McCrory Lane. That's M-C-C-R-O-R-Y Lane, Nashville, Tennessee, 37221. We love you. Amen. Wishing everybody a Merry Christmas and a very happy and blessed New Year. And the Lord willing, we will see you right here uh, January the 2nd. Amen. God bless you. Until next time. Bye-bye.